Well, this afternoon I sat down with all the police chiefs to make it clear that they have my full support in acting decisively to clamp down on illegal protests. It is completely unacceptable that ordinary members of the public are having their lives disrupted by a selfish minority. My view is that those who break the law should feel the full force of it, and that's what I'm determined to deliver. And therefore, are you bringing in new legislation, either increased powers for police officers? What are you doing to help them? We are currently giving the police new powers so that they can clamp down on these illegal protests. They will have my full support in acting decisively and rapidly to end the misery and the disruption that's being caused to ordinary families up and down the country who are trying to just go about their day-to-day -day lives. And I've said to the police, but whatever they need from government, they will have in terms of new powers. We're already giving them some, and I want to back them to use them. Institutional racism has been found within the London Fire Brigade in some police forces, now the victim of the royal race row, says Buckingham Palace, is also institutionally racist. Is she right? Well, it, it wouldn't be right for me to comment on matters to do with the royal palace, although, as, as we've all seen, they've acknowledged what's happened and made an apology for it. How did you feel when you heard this story? Are those sentiments that you have experienced in your life at all? So, I mean, I, I've, as I've talked about in the past, I have experienced racism in my life, but what I'm pleased to say is that some of the things that I experienced when I was a kid and a young person I don't think would happen today because our country's made incredible progress in tackling racism, but the job is never done, and that's why whenever we see it, we must confront it, and it's right that we continually learn the lessons and move to a better future. Union leaders are threatening coordinated strike action across the NHS this winter. Do you think it's dangerous? Do you think that's irresponsible? And can the NHS cope? Well, I think it's, it's deeply regrettable that we're seeing strikes across some parts of the public sector. Now, I, I know things are difficult for people right now economically, but when it comes to pay settlements, they have to be fair, both for workers but also for taxpayers. That's why we have an independent body that makes recommendations to the government about what fair pay settlements are. And actually, the government has accepted all of those independent recommendations. Uh, and I would encourage unions and employers to keep talking so that we can find a way through this. But are you concerned what that could mean if paramedics and NHS staff are striking? I said it's, it's, it's very regrettable that we are seeing the threat of strike action. Uh, the NHS have very robust contingency plans in place to ensure that we can continue to give care to the people we do, but I would urge unions to sit down and talk with employers to find a way through this. We've accepted all the recommendations of the independent bodies on pay who balance the competing needs and make sure that the awards are fair for taxpayers and workers. The government has accepted those and people need to keep talking to find a way through. Finally, I'm sure you're aware that ambulance waiting times are higher than they've been since records began. One in seven of arrivals to hospital in an ambulance have been stuck outside for at least an hour. Is your government failing patients? Look, I want to see ambulance waiting times come down, and that's why, in spite of the difficult decisions we've had to make, we've put more money into the NHS to help address the waiting times that people are experiencing. One of the ways we're going to do that is by moving people out of hospitals, back to their homes, back into the communities, and that's why we've invested in social care, because that money will help provide more capacity, and if we can free up those beds, that will stop some of the delays that we're seeing. And I'm actually going to sit down with the NHS relatively soon to make sure that the plans that we are putting in place are going to have a real impact as soon as possible. And it's not just older people, Prime Minister, but paediatric beds that are full, doctors not able to uh, treat uh, sick kids. Does that make you worried, ashamed, concerned? Well, I, I care deeply about the NHS. I grew up in an NHS family, and that's why, in spite of the difficult decisions that we've had to make elsewhere, I prioritise the NHS with extra funding, most recently in the autumn statement. Now what I want to make sure is that extra funding that we're putting in is actually going to make a difference on the ground, improve the quality of care people get, make sure that they get that care as quickly as possible. We've put the money in, now we need to see the results, and that's what I'm going to focus on delivering.